Let's discuss all the challenges facing the new Congress right now. Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. He's a key member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, Senator, is this a proposal by uh, McConnell to delay the impeachment trial until February? A few weeks, a couple of weeks, three weeks, let's see. Is that something you think your fellow Democrats could support? Well, well, I think Democrats will be open uh, to considering a delay that allows former President Trump time to assemble his legal team and his defense uh, for the impeachment trial if we are making progress on confirming uh, the very talented, seasoned, and diverse team that President Joe Biden has nominated to serve in his cabinet. As you just mentioned, we confirmed Avril Haines to be Director of National Intelligence last night. We have had confirmation hearings and should be able to proceed tomorrow with confirmation for the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of State, Secretary of Homeland Security. These are critical positions to have filled in most administrations for decades. They are filled at the very beginning of the administration. Um, so uh, I would expect that we'd be more receptive to this delay if we are continuing to do the work of the Senate in confirming the senior members of the cabinet across all departments. So it, it sounds like that's uh, actually doable if they go ahead and start confirming these key cabinet positions. You would be willing to wait two or three weeks to actually begin the impeachment trial. And, and it would make sense uh, from the, the, Trump, uh, the Trump people's a consideration. Uh, they want to be able to prepare for this. They've just hired a new lawyer to help the president. It's only fair, probably, to give them some time to prepare. But, Wolf, let's be clear. Um, not just the members of the cabinet that I listed that are the most significant in terms of national security and foreign policy. Um, there are dozens of senior members of the administration who need to be confirmed and deserve to be confirmed. If we continue to make progress in that direction, um, then I think this is a good step. If not, you'll quickly find Democrats frustrated and insisting that we move ahead with the accountability that could be delivered by an impeachment So trial. it sounds, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Senator Coons, there's a, almost like a quid pro quo. You go ahead and confirm these cabinet positions, sub-cabinet positions. You move quickly on that. Uh, the uh, impeachment, the article of impeachment will be delayed, won't be sent over for two or three weeks. Well, is that a fair assessment? It is. As you saw today, uh, well, uh, President Biden has been preparing for months um, to be ready for this moment, uh, knowing that our country is in a crisis, that the pandemic is raging out of control, that it's at its worst point ever, uh, knowing that there is a massive vaccination campaign that needs to be rolled out. I'm surprised to discover no detailed plan for that vaccination. The administration needs to be able to move forward, to move forward filling senior vacancies and cabinet positions all across the government, and to move forward with the bold plan of action President Biden laid out last week, his American Rescue Plan. On the uh, top priority uh, for the new Biden administration, we're talking about the coronavirus pandemic. CNN has learned the Biden team says there's really no substantive vaccine distribution plan to work off of from the Trump administration. But, but look at this, more than 17 million vaccinations have been com completed. The Biden administration is trying to lower expectations. Is the Biden administration simply trying to lower expectations ahead of this difficult push? Because even Dr. Fauci just said at this briefing, they are working off some elements of the previous administration, but they want to do it better. Well, what you saw in that uh, press briefing this afternoon is a renewed commitment by this incoming administration to truth and to science. And if that means in part saying what you don't know and then under promising and over delivering, I think that would be a refreshing change from what we all went through over the last four years. As you just said, the incoming administration discovered there was no thorough and detailed vaccination plan. Shocking that in the two months since the election, outgoing President Donald Trump basically abdicated his responsibilities. As the pandemic raged out of control, he spent his time golfing and tweeting and spinning up conspiracy theories that led to that tragic assault on the Capitol now two weeks ago. Instead, he should have been preparing and finalizing a vaccination plan. So I don't think the Biden team is in any way intentionally under promising. I think they recognize just how deep a hole we're in and how difficult it's going to be to get our country out of this pandemic mess. Yeah, I was encouraged to hear that uh, the uh, new administration wants to activate FEMA the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which deals with hurricane aftermath, tornado, stuff like that, flooding, uh, that they now want to activate FEMA, they want to activate the military, they want to get things going. I've been talking about that for months. I, don't, I, I never knew 
with all the Americans who are dying, more than 400,000 right now, I think 407, 408,000 Americans, maybe, as uh, President Biden says, maybe a half a million within a month or so, why, hasn't all, why haven't all of the assets of the federal government, military, civilian, been activated to deal with this? See, Wolf, all along, uh, I had expected that President Trump would use tools at his disposal, like the Defense Production Act, to ramp up testing, to ramp up PPE, to meet the very real needs of our country. And he didn't. He failed to. I thought the incoming administration would have a detailed plan for vaccination. They don't. The one positive I can say is we do have two highly effective and safe vaccines now being distributed, possibly soon a third or fourth, but we have a lot of work to do. In addition to the resources you just mentioned, as you know, I've long been an advocate for national service, for the AmeriCorps program to be a part of how we address hunger and nutrition challenges, public health and education. There are so many things for which we need more folks. We have a tired and overextended um, health care system and service. We need to bring more folks to bear from the National Guard to National Service to get this done and to get us back to a healthy, stable and prosperous nation. Yes, yeah, some 4,500 Americans uh, uh, died just yesterday. 4,500 Americans died just yesterday from this COVID. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, this is a huge challenge. Uh, Senator Coons, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All.